For the first time since the war began in October, the UN Security Council has called for a ceasefire in Gaza after several failed attempts. Now, what would that mean for Israel and Hamas? We're joined by Professor Austin Nubed this morning. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Thanks for joining us. First off, why did it take so long, six months, to issue such a call? Well, it, it primarily hinges on the political tension between President Biden in the United States and President Netanyahu in Israel. Uh, the, the Biden administration is trying to draw a line between support for Israel on the one hand and drawing a critique of Netanyahu on the other. Nonetheless, the uh, abstention from the UN Security Council vote came three or four months too late. Right, Professor Nuba, you wrapped it up nicely. That was because the U.S. didn't block the U.N. ceasefire this time. Now, uh, then where did Washington's decision come from this time? Well, I think it was primarily a political move. It doesn't. It signaled displeasure with Netanyahu's decision to um, ignore Washington's advice about the impeding offensive in Rafah. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Israeli's defense minister is in Washington, D.C., uh, negotiating further arms transfer deals. And so it was mostly a political signal as opposed to a substantive policy change. Right. Uh, Professor Nufe, I, I have to stress to how the U.S. said the U.N. Security Council resolution is, quote, non-binding, which became quite controversial. What's the controversy here? Well, you, uh, spokesperson John Kirby was trying to make a distinction between binding resolutions and non-binding. It's a legal uh, point of legal minutia at the United States. United Nations, it's uh, primarily a distinction without a difference. It's a way of the United States trying to, on the one hand, abstain from the ceasefire resolution, on the other, um, create, uh, say that there's less distance between the United States and Tel Aviv than actually exists. So it's primarily a political point. It's not a substantive difference in international law. The, would you say there is no shift in U.S. policy from now on? There's uh, increasing tension between the Biden administration and Netanyahu's coalition, but U.S. policy towards Israel has remained largely unchanged, mm. with the exception of some air delivery aid and the opening of a, of a, a relief port in, on the Gaza shore. U.S. is still approving arms transfers. Just the other day, the United States said that Israel is in compliance with a national security memorandum that said uh, arms uh, recipients must abide by international law and respect human rights. So on the one hand, we're uh, abstaining from votes in the United Nations. On the other, we're saying that Israel is in compliance with international humanitarian law. So right. U.S. policy has fundamentally remained unchanged. Right, but Israel was so unhappy with the U.S. decision that it canceled the delegation's White House visit, which also disappointed the Washington side. Now, uh, what right. is Washington expected to do now then? Well, a lot uh, will have to be seen what comes out of the visit of Israeli Defense Minister Yolov Gallant's visit to Washington, whether or not that the Biden administration approves further arms transfers to Israel. That's going to be a signal of substantive U.S. policy as opposed to an abstention at the U.N. or a decision to cancel uh, a meeting. Those are mostly political ploys and not uh, they don't reflect serious political or policy disagreement between both parties. Right. So finally, a U.N. ceasefire call for the first time in six months. Now, what does that U.N. call for a ceasefire mean? I mean, what changes will the call bring? Right. So the most recent resolution that was brought before the Security Council includes um, an immediate ceasefire of, uh, for the remaining uh, time of Ramadan, that's two weeks, in conjunction with the release of all 130-some remaining hostages. Right. So it took six months to draw a U.N. Uh, resolution. Now, uh, Professor Nube, right. I know this is a very difficult question. Uh, it's been six months since the war broke out. Now, how do you expect the war uh, to unfold for the next six months? So what we've seen in parallel to the vote of the United Nations was a breakdown of further uh, hostage negotiations in, Gaza, in, in Qatar. Mm -hmm. So uh, but just today, the... Um, Israeli delegation left Doha, and there was no no use in further negotiations. So those negotiations seem to be on pause. I think a lot hinges on Israel's decision vis-a-vis -vis Rafah. If the military offensive continues south, the Biden administration has said that's a red line for U.S. Mm -hmm. support for Israel. But time will tell whether or not um, the U.S. demurs to IDF actions in Rafah and what happens with the unfolding humanitarian crisis. You have increasing famine and increasing um, 
uh, child starvation and other medical maladies plaguing Gazan civilians that are only getting worse with each additional day that the conflict continues. Definitely. All right, Professor Nube, thank you so much for your insight as always and your time this morning. We appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Thanks so much.